Hello and welcome to the Beer Jerk Beer of the Week drink along with Matt and Luke. <laughs> so Matt does not work at Beer Jerk, but he's a good friend of ours and he's often popping in. So fortuitously, he's here at the moment because he's also uh, the other small gods person. So Matt and I are small gods. We are, and uh, we love to brew uh, rare, interesting, historical beer styles that you can't really find anywhere else. So we've got a real focus on pushing out and looking uh, through uh, the history of beer, looking to different beer cultures to try and find uh, the exciting and delicious styles that you don't normally get to try in New Zealand. This is a Roggen beer and it is called Hexenhaus. So Roggen beer is a, a traditional German style and it uh, translates to rye beer. And so really this beer is all about malt character and specifically rye. In the olden days, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I'm just trying to give you the smaller one because I thought you might just want to drink less uh, less rye beer than me. Great. <laughs> Prost. Prost. <laughs> in the olden days, as in 600 AD and thereabouts across Europe, uh, brewers brewed with all sorts of stuff, uh, and it's quite funny. I uh, occasionally chat to people, and they say, "Oh, I I only like drinking like authentic beer, Reinheitsgebot. I just want four ingredients in my beer." I don't want any of this fruit nonsense, I don't want any other things, but people didn't really use hops that much until sort of the last 500 years or thereabouts. People made Groot and they'd use all kinds of botanicals in their beer. But back to malts, um, rye was used and wheat was used and spelt and barley and just whatever was most prevalent in your region. And in a lot of Bavaria, there was a lot of rye around and it only, um, was really stopped being used in 1516 with the Reinheitsgebot, the German purity law. Uh, and that's not a, it, it wasn't like a preference, it wasn't a recommendation, it, it was absolute law in Germany that these other kinds of grain were saved to be used in bread because they'd had famines at the time. They didn't want people wasting them to make beer when you could easily make beer with more, more commonly available barley. So malted barley was for beer uh, and Roggen beer uh, disappeared for many, many hundreds of years, well, probably about 500 years, until the 1980s, uh, when some Bavarian brewers uh, decided to kick it off again. And um, with, with that, um, kind of, it was a, there was a real kind of um, renaissance of the style, and um, really showcasing the character that you get from rye. Rye is um, another cereal grain, like barley and wheat and uh, oats and all the other grains that go into beer. Um, but rye has uh, a really unique character to it. Um, it's got this beautiful kind of uh, black peppery uh, spice note that, um, and if those of you who are familiar with rye bread will be kind of familiar with that, um, which kind of really adds a, a unique character that sometimes you, um, can be achieved through the use of kind of noble hops and spicy hops and, mm. and can be reinforced with that. Um, but it's, yeah, that, that beautiful uh, uh, peppery spice uh, really kind of, I think, elevates that malt character. It's got great depth and complexity. So uh, to brew Hexen House, our, um, our Roggen beer, uh, we used three different varieties of New Zealand rye uh, in this beer from uh, our friends at Gladfield Malt uh, down in Canterbury. Um, we used a classic malted rye and we used two unique products, which are Gladfield's Black Forest Rye mm. and Crystal Rye. Now those are uh, rye malts that have been treated um, in a different way um, and I'm not a maltster so the, some of the technical details get a bit beyond me um, but uh, one of the key things is with crystal rye and um, so that uh, has been um, malted I believe slightly uh, uh, wetter so some of those sugars actually crystallize inside, uh, inside the malt um, and kind of add that kind of really nice uh, uh, toffee um, burnt caramel note. Mm. Um, the black forest rye similarly has been uh, treated differently inside the kiln uh, to bring out kind of um, a little bit of a dark fruit character. Kind of got like a bit of a, um, a prune, uh, dark plum uh, note coming through there. To reinforce that rye character, we used a, a base of Vienna malt, which is another uh, traditional uh, European style malt, um, which is to toasted and killed a little more highly than your standard uh, base malts. and uh, I think some of you who've been following these videos for a long time and following Small Gods will know that Vienna is um, a particular favourite of mine. A Matt um, special? It's a Matt special. You'll find <laughs> Vienna in a lot of um, 
uh, small gods beers because it adds a really nice um, solid multi foundation to a beer that um, really lets those specialty malts kind of sing across the top. And we like making brown beers at Small Gods. Uh, they're extremely unfashionable. And if you're a long time listener, you know that we sometimes do talk about uh, there are prevalences of certain beer styles in New Zealand and in the world. Uh, and that's simply because that's what sells. And here in New Zealand, people don't really want to buy brown beer. So luckily for us, we do really small batches. So we don't care what people want. Uh, and we want, we want, like, damn it. <laughs> We know best. And especially if it is, you know, you geniuses that subscribe to Beer of the Week and we're sending beers to you, well, you don't get to choose. You have to choose what I send you. So I want to send you brown beer a lot of the time. I probably would send you more if more other brewers made more brown beer. But you're it'd, be, it'd be out of control. <laughs> it, it would be nothing but brown beers and Hefeweizen. <laughs> but you know, we've seen things recently like our uh, like brown porter. There was Lion Tower, which was delicious. Um, there was our dark rye saison, again using a bit of rye for a bit of interesting character. Uh, we've done a Mordred recently, which is a dark table beer. And yeah, I think with New Zealand brewers, you see a lot of stouts because people love them, especially sweet adjunctive stouts. But people are all about the hops and all about the pale ales and IPAs. So it's fun to bring beers like this out. And I mean, Matt was talking about all this, all the flavors and all the character, but really they're quite delicate and quite nuanced. This is a pretty classy beer. It's, it's not gonna whack you around the head with you know, plum flavors and black pepper flavors. It's a beer that does, um, it changes as it warms up, it's nuanced, but this is, it's an everyday beer. And beers like this in places like Bavaria, this would just be what's on tap all the time. And you're a guy that likes Roggen beer. And you just drink this beer. I could drink this beer day in, day out. Absolutely, um, and, it's, and it's that kind of thing where um, being English, um, uh, that, um, that propensity for brown beer with stuff like um, uh, bitters and those kind of classic British styles, where um, it's really about sessionability. A lot, of the, a lot of the new world hoppy beers, which really whack you around the, around the face, can give you a bit of palate fatigue and kind of, um, they kind of outstay their welcome and they're kind of a bit too overpowering sometimes for a session. Whereas beers like this, um, where there's a really great depth of flavor but it's more subtle, it's more well integrated, it's less spiky, um, which allows, uh, as Luke said, do let this beer warm up. Um, I feel like I say this a lot in, all, in a lot of the videos. <laughs> but that's in. But that's because uh, we uh, release a lot of dark beers. <laughs> um, um, but really letting your, letting your dark and brown beers war warm up will give you the best character from them. But as you go through a session and it naturally warms up in the glass, in a big, especially in Britain, in a big classic pint, you'll, you'll get those flavors developing and they're flavors that don't wear out um, over time. So you can mm -hmm. have a few pints in a, in a, on, on an afternoon yeah. and, and it continues to deliver and it continues to deepen um, in, in that flavor where um, some of those hot flavors um, will actually deteriorate as the beer, as the beer warms up. And you, ha you have that, I that hazy IPA that's been out for 20, 25 minutes as you're sipping through the glass, glass and it starts to get kind of skunky and muddy and, mm. and, it, and it fades. Whereas something like this really actually opens up and starts to shine. So it's a really nice session beer for stuff like that. You are not getting palate fatigue drinking this. Exactly. Yeah, just, just never ending. So this beer does have some hops in it. Um, being a traditional German style, uh, we went um, traditional with the hops, actually using Hallertau Tradition, which is a, a classic uh, German style, one of the three Hallertau varieties from the Hallertau region of uh, mm. Germany. Um, and it's a classic noble hop that really delivers a uh, restrained uh, hop character. Again, it's not hopping, uh, whacking you over the head with pineapple and citrus and uh, guava and mango and all those kind of stuff that you get from modern hops. Um, it's a lot more subtle. It ties really well into that uh, rice spice character. It's kind of more uh, herbal, earthy, grassy, um, and just really plays into that malt base. And the name, Hexen House, uh, when we decided to make a rye beer, um, it just sort of popped into my head. I used to uh, I used to do a lot of snowboarding, and I was at the uh, Royal Air Force Ski and Snowboard Championships many many years ago in Austria. So not Germany, but next door, and they also speak German. And uh, we drink in the Hexen House, which was this wild pub on the on the mountain on the ski slopes. And Hexen House means witch's house, as you may have already guessed, if not the word hex by the scary little witch on our. Uh, beer that we're drinking in Halloween week. 
And um, yeah, it was just a, a mad pub with goats walking around and everything was like scary witch themed. So that just kind of made sense. So hopefully you're not struggling too much with pronouncing uh, Hexen House is a bit of a unusual name, uh, but kind of perfect for this beer. And it is not autumn here. It's autumn in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, and it's definitely a autumnal sort of vibe. It is, but every season is a season for brown beer, as we say it. Every day. <laughs> um, yeah, I think uh, we're still ma uh, batting above 50% uh, with uh, dark beers in, our, in the Small Gods uh, uh, archive. I yeah. think uh, more than half of the beers that we've released have been brown or dark, beer, brown or dark beers. So, um, and that's, that uh, is uh, set to continue with our advent calendar beers. Spoiler alert. Spoilers. Our three advent calendar beers are getting packaged next week and they'll be available to drink pretty soon. And they are all dark beers. And I bought all above 8.5% <laughs> as is traditional for our Christmas beers. <laughs> want to really, really deliver that kind of light summer sipping to you here at Small Yeah, Cups. just in the middle of Antibidian <laughs> summer. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so watch out for those. Other things to watch out for is the, uh, the Beer Spot Festival is on Saturday at the Cloud here in Auckland. Um, Matt's going to be there on the I Pacific am. Coast stand. I'm going to have my Pacific Coast hat on, not my Small Gods hat on. Yeah. Um, but um, I'll be waving over at Luke on the other side of the hall. Um, <laughs> or just abusing each other. Yeah. and. <laughs> um, you are not going to believe the beers that we are pouring uh, at the Beer Spot Festival for Small Gods. So Small um, Gods, we've got our first ever Small Gods Beer Festival stand. Yeah. So it's going to be pretty minimalist, pretty stripped back. Uh, and as it's Small Gods, really, really stupid. So yeah. uh, come and uh, check out the Small Gods stand. Check out the Pacific Coast stand as well. Um, because uh, yeah, there's going to be some awesome beers. It's going to be a great day. I think the weather's set to be really nice. So uh, come down to the Beer Spot Festival. It's going to be a fun time. Thank you, Matt. Cheers. Thank you, Luke. Cheers. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. See you at some point.